Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 29th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got a quick uh, diary by Didier today about decoding IP addresses displayed in Windows event logs, in particular event IDs like, for example, 1002, which is a DHCP error. Now, typically that shouldn't really be all that difficult. Uh, The IP address is displayed as an integer, and you would expect this to be your usual network Indian integer course, uh, quite often, actually, I always recommend uh, to developers to represent uh, IP addresses as integers, because then you are avoiding a lot of the ambiguities that you have with various string encodings of IP addresses. But turns out that Windows had a little bit different idea. They're actually using the little endian format with the most significant byte last. What this means is if you're just straightforward decoding it, you would basically receive the byte values in the opposite order. Well, uh, Didier is uh, showing you how to decode it in CyberChef. So hopefully this will help you make more sense of these Windows event logs. And Google this week released a new stable channel update for Google Chrome. This update fixes 10 security fixes. And well, one of the reasons, of course, why I'm mentioning this is that one of these vulnerabilities, a heap buffer overflow in VP8 encoding in libvpx is already being exploited. This particular vulnerability has a CVE number of 2023-5217. As usual, make it a point to at least once a day restart Google Chrome or other web browsers just to give them a chance to update. And the Zero Day initiative today published six advisories regarding the email server XM. Now, the Big problem here is that there are no patches for any of these six vulnerabilities, despite having notified XM over a year ago back in June of 2022. The most severe of these vulnerabilities has a CVSS score of 9.8 according to the Zero Day Initiative and is exploitable without authentication against port 25, which of course is usually open for XM mail servers accepting mail from the public. It's a buffer overflow, so likely it is somewhat exploitable depending on what other buffer overflow mitigations are put in place. Not good that we don't have any sort of guidance at this point from XM. I'll keep a little bit an eye on it, but uh, haven't seen anything yet on their website. If anybody hears anything from XM regarding these vulnerabilities, well, uh, please let me know. And then we got also updates from Progress, the maker of Move It, but in this case, not for their product Move It itself, but for WSFTP, the FTP server component. They're fixing a total of eight vulnerabilities. Uh, two of them are rated as critical, one with a perfect CVSS score of a 10. This vulnerability is a .NET deserialization vulnerability. It may be exploited without authentication. The second critical vulnerability, CSS score of 9.9, which is a directory traversal vulnerability and would allow read, write, delete access uh, to arbitrary files on the system running WS. FTP. The high vulnerabilities are cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, SQL injection vulnerabilities. All of these vulnerabilities are in the WSFTP server manager interface. So that's why you have these web application vulnerabilities here. It's not FTP that you would be speaking in order to exploit these vulnerabilities. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. Thanks for recommending this podcast. Thanks for providing feedback. And as always, thanks for leaving good comments at various podcast platforms. Talk to you again on Monday.